CFB Prime. I'm Nino Brown. What in the world happened to the Pac-12 in five days? You're about to find out on this episode of Shh, Blow the Damn Whistle. Some of you in the room right now, you are where you are. You're giving 60% when you have 120 in you. Why? Because you never made a decision. You already there. Your problem is this is stuff you don't want to give up to go. Listen to me, power for power. Any agent in the room, power for power. Motivational speaker, power for power. Entrepreneur, power for power. Athlete, power for power. Weightlifter, power for power. Whatever you do, I guarantee you, when you do it, nobody can do it like you do it. The problem is you don't hardly do it. CFB Prime, I'm Nino Brown. We here. We don't know how long Pac-12 is going to be here. And one day, maybe 10 years or so, my twins are going to ask me, Daddy, what's this they talk about the Pac-12? And I'll have to tell them a tale of college football that once existed. You know, because USC and UCLA, they, they lit the wick of dynamite that led to the Pac-12 explosion, implosion, unraveling, whatever word, adjective you want to go with, it fits. Brett Yomick played Roadrunner to Georgie K's Wiley e. Coyote. Every trap that Georgie thought he set, Brett got around and became a winner. Right? Colorado came into the Pac-12 and left so fast that Georgie Porgy was asking, Ooh, which way did he go? Like the Willoughby dog. All right? Dion took shots less than a week ago from Dan Lanning. And that's my team, my coach. And then less than a week later... Danny Boy jumped ship to the Big Ten with the Washington Huskies. So ah, I ain't going to pull a Titanic and be left here to sit for a raft. Arizona was like, yo, hello. I don't want to be left for dead. Can I come too? I got some friends, Sun Devils and the Utes with me. That cool? I mean, the, pa the Pac-12 is falling apart. It's a pot. It's not falling. It fell. The Wildcats and Sun Devils have been in the Pac-12 since 78, right, when they left the WAC. And when it was eight to ten members. And the Utes have been there since 2011. And they left faster than a hot knife through butter. They saw the writing on the wall and said, yo, we out. Now, the problem is, and I was going to save this question to everybody to the end. But it all is happening because of an Apple streaming media rights deal that's going to only bring in like 20 million. But let's rewind the tape. Because it doesn't really start there. It starts back 10 years ago when late night Larry Scott decided that he was going to make a deal and only put Pac-12 on late night TV. And then when that fell apart and the Pac-12 network didn't take off like he thought it was going to take off, uh, he thought that he could get a better deal than what ESPN was given, a 50-50 deal, and said, no, nah, I want it all. Well, you got it all. All that's left, right? He was gone. Georgie came in. He got nervous because Dion started flexing, saying, I'm taking my team out of here. USC and UCLA had already dropped a bomb that they were gone. And he got scared. He was backpedaling. He went to Apple, and Apple was like, here, I'll give you this $20 million thing when the Big Ten's making $30 million, $50 million at the SEC. Big 12's $37 million. Like, these teams are making 30, 40, 50 million dollars a year. ACC's floating by, and the Pac 12 is drowning with a snorkel barely above water. Led by a guy who's trying to flip around with two left feet. So, everybody says, I'm gone. We out. And now, you know, the money, like I said, is the issue. Who's getting more money? Everybody who left is getting better off now than they were a week ago. It was all good just a week ago, right? Like, it's crazy. Are you unhappy with the direction college football is going? Do you think this is going to ruin it? Drop it in the comments. Let me know. I, I, 
I would like to see what your perspective is. Because it's not over. This isn't done yet. Just three hours ago before I came on for this show, I'm hearing that Stanford and Cal are in talks with the ACC to be two of the teams out of the last four in the Pac-12. They don't want to be the last dog standing. And people say, well, why would they want to go with the ACC? It's constantly traveling every week across country. Well, you're still P5, right? You go to what's rumored is, you know, Mountain West or AAC, you're going G5. Maps don't mean nothing anymore. Look at Florida State. They just bought a plane. Like, it doesn't matter to these schools. We're all talking about money. I don't want to ever hear anybody about an NIL deal anymore because you got schools doing the same thing. They're going to the biggest bag. What do you think these kids are doing? They're going for the biggest bag. So that better be Knicks. See you later. I don't want to hear it no more. But why would Stanford and Cal go to the AAC? Because I'm hearing it's either ACC or AAC. A lot of three-letter words going around. None of them are good. But the thing is, they've been a victim of realignment. They lost Houston, Cincinnati, and UCF. They went to the Big 12. So what draws them in? Going to ACC. You're still making more money than you were making at the Pac-12. How long does the ACC last? We all don't know. Florida State wants to throw their anarchy and say, we're out and pay the $300 million bag, which is deceiving as it is because that's only $30 million a year over 10 years. Everybody sees the big tag. They ain't reading the fine print. They've already raised $150 million with boosters. They just bought a plane. I think the money's good. They would make all that money back probably in a year and a half. But why would anybody else go to a conference that's losing teams? They want to keep their status, keep their, you know, AAU status and bring that upon them. Like Big Ten's now one of them top schools for academics. Stanford and Cal go to ACC. ACC's giving Big Ten a little bit of a push, right? They're going to have academics through the wazoo. So I believe it's ACC. But then you're left with two teams holding, you know, the empty trash bag. So does Oregon State go AAC, go Mountain West? Do they hope that Big 12 would take them? Because I tell KT all the time, the number's 20. It's three conferences of 20. Okay, when all this is said and done, if it's all the Pac-12 gets realigned, fine, great, and dandy. UConn will be another team that will get realigned. Maybe one or two out of the ACC will get realigned. You might get a couple stragglers come in. But there's going to be three 20-team conferences into a big college football league. Because we all know that this playoff doesn't make any sense anymore with all this realignment. You got one division with four teams. That, that just doesn't work. We all know the money is the thing that surrounds it, so they'll figure it out because they want to make the money work. You know, Oregon took a hit. Like, Big Ten schools are making almost 60 mil, but Oregon's only making 30 with a yearly increase of 1 million a year. They want it out. Pac 12, the smoke, where the smoke, this fire, well, the fire got real hot. So, my question is, what? happens next does the aav play a part in cal and stanford does the average annual value be something that if they go to the acc does that satisfy clemson florida state and miami with their frustration in the shares can they make the pot fatter so that's why to me this is all in play that is why to me in the next 24 hours cal and stanford are going to make a big boy they're coming out like major leagues Calling their shot. Like, okay. All the big dogs ran. All the big dogs got their thing. Got put on a big stage. Got put on a limelight. They did their thing. They went to this stool. They left. Realignment. In the middle of the night. Boom. Another one. Arizona. Boom. They took their friends. But Cal and Stanford kind of hold the last pieces to the puzzle here. Right? Because they could actually save the ACC. And save these teams from not wanting to leave. Because now the pot's a little bigger. Bringing in. More AAV, more value to what they can make and see. More chips to the table to push in when they go to ESPN or Fox or whoever it may be. So, yes, this conundrum of the Pac-12, as we thought was over, when you woke up on Sunday morning to four teams left, it's not over. There's still more dominoes to fall. I'm going to close this with this one question for CFB Prime. And I said it in the middle of the show, and I'm going to bring it again. These two gentlemen had two things in common. They had no college football experience or sources, 
and they both flopped on media deals. So who goes down at what will be a extinct conference possibly by the end of 2023, the Pac-12? Is late night Larry Scott a worse Pac-12 commissioner? Or I'm just going to wait it out, Georgie Kalafis, a worse Pac-12 commissioner. I'm Nino Brown. This is CFB Prime. Blow the damn whistle. Thank you.